So there's no doubt when you come to Switzerland, what are you gonna do? You're gonna eat chocolate, right? And the first stop on our many museums we plan to visit while we're here would be the obvious Lindt. Home of chocolate. Let's see what they give us when we're inside. Come on. Here we are getting ready to go inside. This is so beautiful and the ride over was spectacular. Let's go have some chocolate and see what we can do in here. Obviously, as we were checking in, the first question was, are we allowed to stick our finger into the chocolate fountain? And we were told, no, but there is chocolate for us upstairs, which you are going to now. That is so sick, and it smells like beautiful chocolate all around us in here. cultivation. All chocolate starts out with the cocoa tree. It's beans are the most important raw materials of this delicious treat. The tree thrives around the equator. However, nowadays it's cultivated primarily in West Africa. Find out about the needs of this demanding plant on a cocoa plantation in Ghana. Admire the rich coloring of the fruit and look over the shoulder of the farmers while they work from growing the trees to the cocoa beans ready for transport. The origins of chocolate go back more than 5,000 years. The journey to chocolate as we know it is a long one, a journey through cultures and centuries across countries and social class divides. Join us as we travel to Central America to discover the secrets of chocolate dating back to thousands of years. Witness Spanish explorers bringing the exotic drink back to the royal courts of Europe and how it gradually conquers the rest of the world from there. chocolate with condensed milk leads to the invention of milk chocolate. Here is all of the packaging before the 1900s and this is really cool. You can see the molds where they would make the Easter candy and all of the details in this history of chocolate. Amazing. We had 1900s. This is the packaging from 1900 to 1950. The detail is spectacular and you can tell just really how well things were made that it looks this good that many years later. If you've ever traveled, you know about this chocolate. Everybody buys it and look at the packaging of how they made it to put it in the molds before it was wrapped and put into there. 95 cents is what that cost in 1950, 95 cents. Now we're looking at 1980 to today, and you can see the difference. We've now gone to plastic. We know that plastic is not good for the environment. We know we made that switch. Everything before you saw was in the tin and in the metal, and now you see the current. And to remember that only 3% of plastic is actually recyclable. The opportunity has finally presented itself. Uh, mind you, you may notice a little speech impediment with me today. It's because of the Invisalign. So I don't have them in right now, but I have the little nubs on my teeth that hold them in. But I knew I was going to eat chocolate. But I'm just explaining myself because this isn't going to be the name clarity that I'm used to. So now that you know, pull it out. Out. It's warm. <laughs> that was dreamy. 
Ooh, that was good. It's butterscotch, right? Oh, they're all different flavors. Whoa. That was butterscotch chocolate. It's important for research purposes and for all of you that I try every single one of them. Now this is milk chocolate. I find three pumps is the ideal amount. Oh, it's so smooth. It's so good. Last but not least is going to be the attempt at three pumps of the white chocolate. Yeah. It would be nice to make a spoon of all three and do yourself like a twist. Here we go. Mm. Delight. It's just a delight. sugar talking but we're not sure we're very thrown by what's taking place because if you think about how this looks from here and then to there it would almost have to be looping upside down and all the way back to recycle because they're not reversing but let me explain to you what we're talking about these start out as beautiful little nuggets right here of the center filling walk over here it gets a little coating on it then over here it's got white chocolate on top. Then over here, it's stripped with caramel. Now a beautifully placed nut. Again, we're getting these roasted right here. They come out through here. They stop, but there's no traffic jam. They're not laying on top of each other. Where are they going? Is this going underneath here? Can we see under the cabinet? We're too curious to not have an answer to this. This is bizarre. The continuation, uh, we've resolved this. We looked under very closely, something that no one else that's walked through here has cared about one bit. They loop underneath and then they keep recycling. So they're glued onto there. Of course, these are not what we're gonna be eating in a moment because I'm sure we're gonna get some of these. But now we have an answer, we're a lot less confused and we feel better about some sort of a solution to share with you. Because obviously you were concerned as we were that these chocolates may be going in the trash and we would like to eat them. <laughs> I mean, if life was really like this, you could just put your hand underneath something and voila. Oh, <laughs> I missed that one. I'm going to catch it. Mm. Hazelnuts, cinnamon, almond, pepper, and strawberry. Switzerland, home of chocolate. 1819 is a pivotal year. Francis Louis Tellier says of the first chocolate factory in Switzerland, Veve. The country quickly develops into the home of numerous chocolate makers. Increasing quantities of chocolate are being produced. More and more companies follow this development over more than 200 years. If I could actually spin the world, I would make sure that everybody could put their hand anywhere in chocolate would come out. The world of chocolate as we know it. One of each, you make yourself a nice little bouquet of as many chocolates as you would like to have. Can I ask, do you guys just get sick of eating the chocolate? No, just all day, every day? I every day eat chocolate. <laughs> so when we watched her fill this, she put a piece of something right in front of here so she could fill this bin completely and they wouldn't fly out and then she lifted it up and our hands were free to go in there again. The fabulous chocolate journey at Rose. And here we are, back out in this bright, bright escape at the beginning of it all. We just had a lovely gentleman walk up to us and say, would you like some chocolate? And I said to him, obviously. So now we have more chocolate in our pocket. It's pockets of chocolate. 
little ball in up in here, okay? <laughs> if it was currency, we'd be crushed. Look at those beaters. All the different shapes they make for the holidays. We're also that person that asks everybody that works here if they still eat chocolate and they all giggle and smile. I think they're trained to say yes, right? But they're obviously sick of it. I got pockets full of chocolate right here. I learned a lot about the goodness that is lint chocolate. Have a little bit of a sugar buzz going. Step one in the Switzerland activities. Knocked off the bucket list.